All right, so I've been using the Rodecaster Pro 2 for quite a little bit now, and I am really happy with my current setup. I'm happy with the settings that I'm using. I'm happy with the different processes I'm using. And it is not the most straightforward or easy to uh, figure out solutions sometimes. And I've used a combination of articles and YouTube videos and Reddit posts to get my Rodecaster Pro 2 into a position that I'm really happy with. So I thought I would do a quick little update about how I'm feeling about it, as well as all of the settings that I'm using in order to allow myself to both record YouTube videos and stream in a way that I'm happy. So keep in mind, I am recording this at the end of September 2023, and the Rodecaster Pro 2 is on firmware version 1.2.2, and that is relevant because they could do a lot of changes to the software via firmware updates, and those can be both good and bad. Um, so just keep it noted. All right. So if you take a look at my roadcaster here, first thing you might notice is that I have all of the listen or the solo buttons on every channel. The reason for that is I really do like using the back channel mode. Uh, what that basically does is it se separates your audio into two separate zones. So you have your live zone and then you have a back channel and the back channel allows you to communicate without that going out to your main output uh, or your main stereo mix. So I don't use it overly often. I use it mainly to talk to people in my Discord without that going out to my stream. Um, oftentimes I will actually start my stream that way where um, I'll end up putting us into back channel. So I'll quickly show you how this works and how I use it. Uh, the main thing is host or the mic input one has to be on the back channel for it to be uh, active. Your um, number one USB output cannot be included in the back channel. And uh, basically the way it works is because I have all the solo or listen buttons on, as soon as I have the solo and the mute button selected, it puts something into the back channel. So this is gonna mute me very quickly, but you can see if I put another device in a back channel without the host being on, the back channel doesn't actually activate. You'll know it activates when these buttons change to a yellow color. So you'll see as soon as I mute my microphone here. You can see that these three channels uh, went into back channel mode. So why that's important, again, I would end up muting my main microphone and then muting the uh, chat line that I have that goes to Discord. And that would allow me to talk to my friends in Discord without my voice or their voices going to the stream. Um, I don't use it very often, but it's nice to have. It doesn't really take much to set up. You can also set up the back channel mode to be activated with one of your smart pad buttons. I just prefer having it this way. It makes life very, very easy. And there's a few other settings that I use in uh, tandem with this um, in order for it to work the way that I'm happy with. Now, other than that, we have my channel set up currently where I have, this is my main microphone that I use to talk to you and I use on my stream. This is a secondary microphone. I use this when testing and comparing microphones. Actually in the video where I'm comparing this blue Sona, I use my pod mic on one and then the Sona on two, but I've since switched over to the Sona for the next few videos. Let me know if you like how it sounds. So that's what I would end up using this for. If anybody ever ends up coming over and we're using two microphones to talk, um, I would use this channel for that. So this one's for my gaming PC. My gaming PC is basically only used for the audio coming out of it and then microphone going into it. Very simple. Uh, Fader 4 is being used for my stream PC and this is all the main audio from the stream PC. Again, relatively simple. Number five, I have set up for the chat. So this is set up as the road chat input and output uh, within Windows. I have this going uh, in and out of Discord and any other chat applications that I have. And then the last fader I have here is set for the um, sound effects from my pads. I like using them in particular games like BattleBit and stuff. It's a little fun. So I have that set to there. And then as you can see, I also have the three virtual faders for Bluetooth and then the fourth and third inputs. All right, so let's just go over the physical inputs and outputs here. Main microphone coming in, second XLR cable for another microphone here, makes it very easy. I don't have to try to reach around the back of the mixer to get everything plugged in. 
I have a quarter inch to three and a half mil adapter here so that I can easily plug in something as an auxiliary input if I want to. Here I have an XLR to three and a half mil adapter. That is actually going to my monitor. And the reason for that is if I'm gonna be playing anything like my Steam Deck or my Switch, I really don't wanna to have to play around with cables and audio and moving things around and trying to get things working. So what that allows me to do is it just allows me to plug either of those devices into my capture card. That capture card goes to my monitor and because it's through HDMI, it passes along that audio as well. And then the audio comes out through the monitor auxiliary output and then comes into the mixer. I can control everything from here. I can listen to it on my headphones as normal and my speakers as normal. Very easy setup. These two cables are going to my speaker monitors. So these are the ones that are above my desk. This cable here is actually for my headphones. I have a cable that runs underneath my desk and allows me to un unplug and replug headphones in really quickly. So I have that set up. And then I have the USB outputs and inputs and then the power and pretty straightforward. Now, as much as I would love to show you all the settings on this little tiny display, it might be easier for me to do in Rode Central. So let me go ahead and do that on the computer. All right, so we've got our Rodecaster Pro 2 here. We're gonna go ahead and launch that up. And let's go quickly into audio setup. You can see again, these are all the inputs um, and outputs as I mentioned uh, when we were going over it physically. Not much of a change here. I have things set up um, as I've done in videos in the past. For device configuration, this is where a lot of the good sauce happens. So I have all my headphone outputs set to the NTH100. I don't use an NTH100, I use the Sennheiser 6XX, but this seems to work pretty well for me. And if I ever have to switch anything, I can just switch it here very quickly or on the device. Now for monitor, this is a really important setting that I use on a daily basis. I have it auto mute the output. So it'll mute when uh, microphone channels are active and then it'll activate when all microphone channels are muted or the, lift, or the faders all the way at zero. This is super handy because I do like using my speakers a lot and I like switching between my headphones and my speakers. If I'm not recording anything on my microphone, I'm probably using my speakers. So this allows me to quickly switch to them and it allows for no audio feedback or anything like that. It is amazing and I use it all the time. All right, so next we have routing and routing is super important if you wanna have that really granular control over what each output is hearing. Right, so in my headphones, I've basically got everything. If you don't wanna hear your own microphone, you would turn the microphone off by hitting it twice and it would be gone. But I do like hearing the feedback of my own voice so I can kind of understand levels and all that kind of stuff. So this is how I have my headphones set up. As you can see here, in this menu, you can set the level different to what the fader position actually is. And if you have it linked, it's going to be relative to the fader position. So if you see here, I have it set so that it's at the uh, zero uh, position, but the fader is actually all the way at the top. And if I move the fader right now, it is gonna move everything down together as, um, as a linkage. Now you can unlink by pressing it once, and uh, I'll do this on the microphone. So you'll see that it is now unlinked. So it is unlinked from the fader. So no matter what, if I move the fader, it's never gonna change that level on this output. But again, for headphones, it's pretty straightforward. I have kind of everything. And then if I use these two, um, they're just gonna be with the fader anyway, so that's fine. This is the only one that I've really played around with here. I am not really using the rest of the headphones, so those are like that. The monitor speakers are set to main mix, pretty simple. Recording and Bluetooth don't really use them right now, so they're both set to main mix and then mix minus. Mix minus, I'll explain that in one quick second. So for USB 1, which is my streaming and recording computer, you can see that this is all I've got. All I've got going in there is just my gaming computer, which is the USB 2. The reason for that is I have my microphones going into the chat channel. I don't want feedback um, from USB 1. If I just had this off, that would be a mix minus. And then the chat has its own thing, so I don't need it in, the air, in there either. And then I have the pads audio going through the chat as well. So if you click on that one, you'll see that I have the chat. I don't want the feedback going back in here. I don't wanna hear the main computer audio through here. I don't wanna hear the gaming com computer audio coming through here. 
I just want the microphones and the sound pad. And then for my gaming computer, I just want my microphone and my sound pads. If I have a second microphone, I can turn that one on as well. So this is how the routing is working and it works really, really well for me. So I'm pretty happy with that. So main streaming and recording computer, the chat mix on that streaming and recording computer, and then the gaming computer. That's basically how that have this set up. Now, if I go to my voice meter, you can see that I have the mic coming through on input one, and I have it going out to the auxiliary, and that's just to have some flexibility. But in the rest of things, I have my main audio on input one, I have my Discord and stuff talking to input two, but not really anymore, and I'll show you that in a second. And then I have my music coming through virtual audio input three, and I'll show you why I have that in a second as well. So if we go to my Discord, I have it set for my input device to just be the microphone and my output device to be that auxiliary. Um, I could switch this to be the chat as well, but I do like having a little bit of control over a few things. So I like it going through voice meter. So that's Discord. And then if we look at OBS itself, I actually have audio sources set up for all these things individually. So the mixer is just the main stereo. The mic is the chat line. My desktop audio is voice meter input. My music sources is voice meter input three. And then the Discord is voice meter aux input. So I can control all these separately. I can see all their lines separately. I can send them to different tracks if I want to. And this is a really easy way for me to have super granular control over all my audio. And it took me a little bit to get this all figured out and in a way that I'm happy with, but this is where it's at. Now, because I use the listen buttons or the solo buttons, I have to have the after fader listen active or else no matter what, no matter what position I have the faders in, it is not gonna change the way that I'm hearing anything in my headphones or going out. So this is extremely important as well if you're gonna be using the listen buttons like I do. Now for multi-track, I have these turned off. Um, it would be nice to be able to use it, but it hasn't worked very well in the past for me. And it is one of the downsides of the Rodecaster Pro 2. I really wish that it had more virtual tracks so that you can have a lot more granular control of your audio. Um, in reality, on USB 1, you have your main and your chat. And then on USB 2, you only have a main. You don't have any other additional ones. Um, it would be really nice if both of them had maybe three or four so that you can control music and things like that separately, but unfortunately not right now. So again, I have these off. And processing, I haven't really changed much on the, the master compeller at all, and the output delay is set to default as off. And really the only other setting that I changed from the default is on the display. I went into metering and I changed it to broadcast so that I could see the dB levels. That's really it. It's pretty simple and yeah, that's it. So that's a wrap on how I've been using my Rodecaster Pro 2, the settings and the configurations that I have set up. I do really hope this video helped you. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you like subscribed. If you have any questions or comments about the way that I have things set up or why I have things set up a certain way or what have you, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors, Lots of Step Back, and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you do want to see any of my other product related videos, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.